that's going to show you the number of subscriptions we have to the marketing insights on your website. And it's also going to show you what people might have clicked on or looked at um, on those particular market insights. And again, that will take you if you click on that button to the subscriptions for market watch over the or excuse me for the neighborhood reports over the last couple of days. And it's going to show you all of those different neighborhood reports and who is the person who has uh, requested that subscription to it. As we continue to come down the insights dashboard, this is where it gets a little bit fun. This is where it starts to give us those action items and to do items for different people and on our plan and what's coming up. Remember, I've said in our other classes before that our action plans are more than just drip campaigns. They also contain action items that things we need to do. So for example, this is a good one here at the top. This person, Sam Smith, is on my birthday action plan. Uh, I'm overdue on this one because that's the last training class I had, but it's letting me know that I had to do something with this action plan. And if I click on them, it's going to give me the option to either email or call them or open um, or open up their actual profile in my client manager and see what I might need to do with this person. So if I need to go ahead and add some additional information, um, if I need to go ahead and update anything, or if I just want to note maybe one of my interactions that I have with them, whatever I need to do on here, um, I can certainly do that. Let me go back to my Insights dashboard. I've also put a bunch of people on that date on an action plan. So part of my action plan that I had for my new client was that I needed to follow up with them. So again, this is going to be, if I go ahead and click on that person, it's going to let me go ahead and try to follow up on them. So I can either call them, I can email them. Um, if you have the upgrade to any kind of text messaging that's available in here, text messaging is available as, um, as an upgrade into our system. It's not something that comes with uh, each and every one of these. It's something brave, brand new that we have in our system. Hi, Christian. But it's letting me know because I have so many of these people that I put on this new client action plan that I have a bunch of different follow-ups that I need to do. Go ahead. Um, Karen asked, what happens when an action plan is complete? Depends on the action plan. Um, so uh, some of our action plans um, continue in perpetuity, like our newsletter action plan, for example. Um, for those of you who are using our newsletter action plan, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. Um, we have them subscribed for 2023. We'll be creating the 2024 ones here fairly shortly. And anybody who's subscribed to 2023 will just get rolled right over into 2024. Some of our action plans have a beginning and an end. So for example, this is a good one to, to, to talk about. This new client action plan is set for a very specific number of days, for example. Um, this is somebody who's brand new to my action plan for a new client. It just means that I'm gonna send them a couple emails about what I can do for them, what my system can do for them, their client dashboard, that kind of thing. It also has a couple of times that I need to email them or call them or follow up with them. But they're not, a, a new client's not gonna stay in that action plan in perpetuity because at some point in time, they aren't a new client, they've either become uh, part of our, our family and they have purchased or sold, um, or they become friends and they just start to incubate until the next time they purchase. Um, so that has a beginning and an ending point to it. So the nice thing is, is that a person can be on more than one action plan, which I love. So for example, the people I put on the new client action plan, because maybe I just met them, can also go on my monthly newsletter action plan, or they can go on a different action plan that I've created for them, whatever it happens to be. Um, so we can we can have them on more than one action plan, but it also just depends on the action plan. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. We have one more question. Sure. It's where can we find info on the text upgrade? Um, I will let me wait till the end here and I will go ahead and show you what that looks like. Um, because I need to go into a client record in order to show you that. So next time I go in, I'll show you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So this is giving me my different to do's that I need to do in here. The nice thing about this is it's also going to give me some things that are upcoming as well. Oh, look at that. We have some things that are due today. So my new client action plan, for example, um, I put these uh, in a previous training class, so I forgot to call them after the day three mark. Um, but that's OK, because it's letting me know that I have something due today as well. So I do need to go ahead and touch base. So if I were an agent and these were my clients, I would be spending most of the afternoon on the phone or sending emails just to touch base with my new client, just to do a quick check in and see how things were going. 
So it's going to show you all the old stuff. It's going to show you stuff that's due today. It's going to show you stuff that's due tomorrow. It's also going to show you things that are coming in the future as well, just so that you can plan. Um, gives you kind of a quick heads up. Um, maybe there's some tasks that you can go ahead and complete today, um, and then you can go ahead and, and get those done and check those off. So when you're done there and you've checked something question. off. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, the other question was, where can we find info on how to set up our listings? I've tried it and it's not working for me. Setting up listings. Let's go ahead and just elaborate on that real quick. Share, you can drop it in the chat or you can unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> OK, um, <clears throat> I I thought that I've set up my listing to so that my so that my client gets um, updated on how many clicks and whatnot is happening. And I, I it's not it's not working. However, the listing's only been active since I, I believe Monday. Oh, no, last Friday. So it's been almost a week. OK, they should be getting they should be getting something today on it. OK, so but we'll double check it. We'll double check it anyway. So I'll make a note and um, just double check to make sure everything's working OK. Oh, OK. All right. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, so if you've completed a task and you're checking some boxes, I've made a bunch of calls today. These are my new clients just double checking in on how they're doing. Everybody's doing great. We're just waiting on inventory. I can go ahead and just click this done. It gives me my little task list here today and next time I log in that will go away um, and it will not show up on my task list. A couple of other things to note on here. Um, it's going to give us a couple of snapshots in here, so it's just going to show us what's in the pipeline and that pipeline can uh, be developed by things like what is going out to our clients in Property Watch. Um, it can be maybe something we've put in the transaction area in each client um, client dashboard. Um, so that pipeline is trying to determine what what's in the pipeline based on what's going on and the actions that are going in and out of your different uh, out of your different clients. So if you don't if you're working with a client directly, for example, and they're not set up for property watch on your website and the system has no way to determine what's going on with them. Maybe you haven't put any kind of transaction information in their dashboard. Um, it's not going to know what kind of dollar value to assign to that person, so it's not going to show in your pipeline. So just know that you do have complete control of what that pipeline looks like just based on the actions that you're doing with your clients. So we have numbers that are nurturing and our commission structure. And again, that's all based on information that we've put into the client dashboard ourselves. It's going to let us know how many clients have been active this month. This is a great way to be able to just kind of see where we are as far as um, people who are logging in and what they're doing. I'm going to log into an agent with live clients here shortly, um, but we do have the number of active properties and under contract. And if we click on those, it is going to take us to our listing manager. We do have the opportunity um, in this section here to send a direct email. Now, this is not going to come from our, our email system um, like Outlook. It is actually going to come from an email that is uh, built into the system. So it's going to essentially say e-card. This should say send e-card. And if I click on that, it's going to take me to the email marketing section where I can send a quick e-card to somebody. So in our e-marketing, we have lots and lots of different templates that you can use. So for example, if I wanted to send a quick um, birthday or I wanted to set up a holiday, for example, Halloween's a good one. We can take a look at our Halloween e-cards we have built into RWT Connect. And we can certainly choose one and we can go ahead and send that out. We can change this information. Um, we can update some of this information on here. We can change what it reads, things like that. This works the same way as everything else in our system. Your preview is gonna be on your right, things you can do or on your left. So for example, if I want to change my message text, it's going to be over here. And if I want to send this out, it's going to bring me to the option to either send to a whole contact list, an individual person, or a group. We can search by anything on here. So if I know, for example, I want to send this just to Julie Abrams, she's one of my clients, I can choose just her. If maybe I want to send this out to everybody in my neighborhood, I have a group called My Neighborhood here, and the people are tagged as My Neighborhood, I can do that. Maybe I want to send it out to every single person in my database. There's a little trick to that. It's called the word all. And 
we have a standard default group in our system called all contacts and it'll just send out this e-card this trick-or-treat e-card to everybody in your system that has an email address in it so the nice thing about that send section as well is that you do have a send now or send later for future delivery so if you don't want to deliver halloween until the 31st um, you certainly can just schedule it for a future delivery remember i said that in your email insights you'd have an opportunity to take a look at emails that were coming for future delivery this is a good example of that if you set up this e-card for example um, and you want to send it out on the 31st if you extend out your calendar to future delivery in your email insights you would actually see you, all of your contacts or the people that you had sent this to and it just kind of waiting it looks like it's pending in the system so you can see what's getting ready to go out to people hey kristen go ahead karen asked if you could open that last window again this one the one that lets you schedule the send mm -hmm. right there so again you can search by an individual contact or a group you can send it now or you can set it for future delivery and if you click future delivery, it's just going to bring up a typical calendar for you and you can just go ahead and select which which date you want to bring in. How did you get to that? So I was in that e-card e uh, e-template e-card template and I just hit the send button and send is going to let me bring in my send options. OK, thank you. Great. Um, I just want to make one remark. Um, don't forget that it's in Pacific time. Right. The that is for the the we don't what? have a specific time in here. We have morning, afternoon, and night in this system. No, Pacific no, no, time. no, no. It's on Pacific Coast time. I'm another way because you say okay, go ahead. It is for marketing resource because um we try to change it, but this one only has morning, afternoon, or night options. Oh, okay, good. Awesome. Yep, Thank yep, you. yep. Two different right. two different systems. This one we're only okay. talking about RWT Connect, but you're perfect. Great opportunity, great uh, observation. Uh, do be careful because uh, we do try to catch it when we're setting up all the systems, but uh, she is right. Marketing resource e-cards um, are on Pacific time by default. We try to get you guys changed over to East Coast time uh, when we're setting things up um, and try to look at it when we're doing profiles. So yes, if you're setting up a specific time, this particular system allows you to send in morning, afternoon, or evening only. Um, and the reason we do that is because the system is sending out so many emails um, that as we send it out in a specific time, it just kind of gets queued up. Um, we wouldn't want to send out thousands of emails at you know 9 a.m., um, but we can stagger them between 9 and 11, and it cuts down on being tagged to spam. It cuts down on the system getting bogged down and an error happening, things like that. So we just kind of give it generically morning, afternoon, or evening in this particular case. All right, let's go back to the Insights dashboard here real quick. So other things that we can do in here, we can add a task. So if we need to add a task for ourselves or we need to add a task uh, for a specific person, oh gosh, we have so many touch bases because I added my entire database to something on here. Um, we can certainly go ahead and add a task to our calendar. Normally it doesn't look this bad. Let's go look at next week. There we go. So as we move out, our calendar probably looks a little bit more like this usually, um, where we can go ahead and set a task up if we need to. And again, that task will show up in that task dashboard for us. So we can set up a task by type in here. So if we need to set up, maybe we want to be reminded about a meeting or an open house or to set a phone call or a, a specific task, for example, we can certainly do that. Most of the time, we're not using these for showings and open houses and meetings right now. I think as we start to get down the line and using this CRM and Insights dashboard more and more, um, I think we'll see more of that. Right now, I see a lot of people using these for, hey, don't forget to call somebody. Hey, don't forget to do something very specific um, or maybe setting up an appointment. I'm going to put this in here as a task um, that I need to be reminded to do something. I can set the subject line for this. So if I'm going to set a task for this particular date um, and I need to say um, that I need to, maybe I'm going to send out something for um, Thanksgiving for all of my clients. I need to make my pie order. So um, I'm going to put order pies for clients. And I can put that in my notes, whatever my notes need to be. I can choose a specific contact if I need to. So is there a specific contact that I need to assign this to? Um, I can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do it for this one, um, but I can certainly go ahead and put it in here for clients. 
I can schedule a time that needs to be done if I need to, um, or I could just schedule it on the day. So if it's just it just needs to be done on that particular day, I can do it. So this is for the 20, 24th, obviously. I can set myself for a reminder. So I can say, do I want to be 15, 30, one hour, whatever it happens to be. So I just want to be reminded an hour before that I need to order my pies. And I can mark it as completed if I need to. So if you were in my seller dashboard and my seller insights class, remember that we had those seller task items that we could also add. Some of these tasks, um, if they're based on a specific listing, for example, end up on that seller insights area. So we'll show how all that ties together in a future class, but just know that this tasking and things like that becomes more important as we go, go down the line. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And next time I log in, it's going to show me that in my to do dashboard that um, coming up on the 24th that I need to order my pies for my client uh, for my client appreciation uh, party that I need. Let me go back to my insights dashboard here. A couple of other things that we can do in here. We can also send a message if we need to. Uh, for somebody who asked about text messaging, when you hit that send a message button, whether it's in a client or in this main dashboard, it's going to bring up the wave messenger task option here, um, texting option, um, and it's going to give you the plans that are available. Um, this is an add on to our system. It is a third party vendor that has been vetted and is uh, tied into our, our CRM and with our vendor that we use for that Reliance Network. I am not going to go into all of this today, but just know that if you are interested in that kind of text messaging option, it is there. You can take a look at the plans and the pricing, and it's very optional, and you can see what works for you. You can also build a saved search from here. So, for example, if you have a new client follow-up and you know that you need to build a saved search for someone, you need to assign it to a particular client, it's going to bring you to that option to be able to build a saved search. Whenever you build that save search and you hit save, you have the option that it's either going to go on your website or again, there it goes to that selected client. So maybe I'm working on my to do list and I need to set up save searches for somebody in the future. Now that we know kind of where they're looking, I can certainly put selected client type in my client's name. It'll try to find it and I can go ahead and assign it to this individual person. So I hope you can see that this Insights dashboard is really kind of giving you um, everything that you can do in our CRM kind of in one area here um, as we kind of continue to go through that down the tools. Um, it also allows you to create a contact directly from here as well. So if you want to go ahead and hit, click Create Contact, it's going to bring you to the Contact Information window, and you can put, again, as much or as little information as possible in here. Just know when we go into Action Plans here in just a minute, um, there are a couple of automated action plans for birthdays, home anniversaries, and wedding anniversaries. If you happen to have that information, do stick it in here. Um, it's a great kind of set it and forget it action plan that you can put your clients or your whole contact database on. Um, so if you happen to have any of these dates, um, they will go ahead and get that e-card if you set them up on that action plan. And it's just something that can go into perpetuity. Again, using that hamburger menu, I'm going to go back to the Insights dashboard here. And I'm going to scroll on down and it's going to show me a couple of things that are going on. Again, I'm going to show you that live listings here in just a second. I'm going to switch to another agent, but I'm going to go ahead and go down here to the bottom. Um, you do have contacts and what they're doing. So, for example, here we have Julie Abrams. She has been recently active and there's that thing. It's asking me to start a new action plan for her. And these are the groups that she belongs to. It's just giving me some basic information. If I go ahead and click start a new action plan for her, it's going to take me to the action plan window where I have an opportunity to choose an action plan for her. Before I go into action plans, I just want to stop there just because action plans is kind of a thing on its own and just make sure you guys didn't have any questions so far with that kind of insights dashboard before I move on. Any additional questions? All right, so action plans. So I clicked on the action plan button on that particular client to go to action plans, but there's a couple of other ways to get there. Remember, I already pointed it out in that uh, button at the very top of the insights dashboard where it says, hey, you need to set up some people on action plans. It's also going to take you to this window. The other place that you can get to it will be under that hamburger menu. 
under marketing and there's action plans right there action plans and it'll take you to the same place so one nice thing about rwt connect crm is that you have lots of different buttons and lots of different ways to get to the exact same place just depending on what you're doing it's one of the things i love about the system so you have a couple of options here but i want to point out what this looks like first um you this is of course my training account so i have lots of action plans in here you guys if you have not used this yet are not going to have this many but I want you to know that when you see this cog icon over here, that means it's a stock plan. It's a plan that's built into the system already. Um, and you guys will have all of these little cogs on there. You guys will also have all these little things that look like globes. These are company plans. These are plans that we've created as a company that we've launched for you guys to use as a whole. A couple of other plans that might be in here, depending on what office you're in. A couple of our offices do have an office plan and it's a slightly different icon. And then if you see this little person icon right here, it means that you've created your own plan. So we do allow you to create your own plans in here. And we also allow you to copy the plans that are in here if you wanna modify anything. I have given an entire class on action plans. Um, it is a full half hour class on how to create these and things like that. But for today, I just want to show you how you can set up somebody on an action plan nice and nice and easy. And then I'll encourage you um, to go look at the action plan class if you want to see how to customize them, how you want to create your own um, plans, how you want to copy other plans and things like that. So I had the monthly newsletter plan and every single person has this in their system. It's probably the easiest one to set up. And it's called the monthly newsletter that's sent on the 4th. If I click that, it's going to show me all of the different activities. Now, this question did come up. What happens if this action, what happens when this action plan ends? It looks like it ends on December 4th, 2023. What's going to happen is we will flip this so that it will start again in January. Um, so the January one will go out in 2024. And if you have people subscribe, they'll just stay subscribed to your monthly newsletter. You can see the past issues that have gone out if you click on them. One of the things I do want you to note, however, is that you may not be able to see any future content on these. This is a good one. The reason we don't do future content this far out is because we know the market is changing. This came in handy, especially when we had to close down offices at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, we certainly did not want to put out an April newsletter that said, hey, prepare your home for an open house. It would have been very tone deaf um, and it would also have been very off topic. We know that the real estate market changes, um, the industry changes, things that come out change. Um, it, it just, we wanna make sure that we have the most current content, uh, content that goes out. We also wanna make sure that it's relevant and certainly not tone deaf to any current events that are going out. You'll see this content load, and this comes from our vendor. You'll see this content load a few days, sometimes a week before um, this newsletter needs to go out. So just don't be afraid if you don't see content in the November newsletter. It just means that it's waiting to make sure that it's the most relevant information before it goes out. If you want to see what kind of information goes out, you can certainly take a look at any of these uh, previous issues. For example, here's the May one, preparing your home for a disaster, just kind of generic basic information. And of course, it's going to be branded to you with your signature here on the bottom. And all of those, that information comes out of your profile in RWT Connect. It's really easy to add people. It's the same uh, way that you would normally send an email. It's one of the reasons I showed you that section. That you can go ahead and you can do a contact, you can do a group, or you can do all. So for example, if I do a search in here and I want to add just my client, Julie, it's going to allow me to add uh, Julie to the system. If I want to send this out to everybody, maybe in my neighborhood, because it's something I've customized, I can certainly send it out to just the my neighborhood group if I want to. But my favorite thing is, of course, the all button for something that's nice and generic like this. And if I type in all, it's going to bring in all my contacts and I can go ahead and add the um, the all contacts group. So the nice thing is we can also remove people the exact same way. So if I want to remove the all contacts group, I can certainly do that as well. Um, and if I need to remove contacts, I can. So I want to talk about this status here real quick. You'll notice that we have some people who are unsubscribed. This is a training account, so we have lots of bounces and unsubscribes in here. Um, so you will see unsubscribed. You'll see people who are also in progress. 
in progress just means that they're in progress um, in the actual campaign. So this person has obviously been sent something. They were added in 2022. They're still receiving my stuff. In progress just means they're in progress in the campaign. Um, if this has ended for whatever reason, it's actually going to show you that it has ended. Um, and that's a great example for like that new client one that has an ending date to it. So you can certainly go ahead and add people to those action plans if you'd like. This action plan only contains emails. I do want to show you what an action plan looks like, however, when it has a task related to it. We do have a company plan in here that we created called the birthday action plan with a task notification. You saw that task in my task bar in my to do list where it said that that person had a birthday and I had a task that I didn't do last week. So what this one says is that we'll send you out a birthday on your birthday as long as somebody has a birthday in that client profile and they have a date in there that we can follow. It's going to send out this birthday card. And it also is going to give me a task to do. And in my case, that task says, hey, this contact's going to receive an automatic birthday e-card from the system tomorrow. Reminder, follow up personally with a phone call. So it's going to want me to pick up that phone and just say happy birthday to my client um, in the system. So this is one that's been created. We do have a birthday action plan that's in here that is um, that doesn't have the agent task notification. If you're not interested in doing that, it's just the email that goes out. Another quick word about the um, the action plans that are system based that those e cards do get changed out from year to year. So, for example, in 2023, this is the birthday card that went out. Happy birthday wishes with the balloons and it's just kind of a quick quick note. Hey, thanks. I hope you're having a special day. Look forward to connecting with you soon in 2024. This birthday e card will get swapped out for something else so somebody won't receive the same e card uh, two years in a row. Nice thing again about that having all contacts in here is that as you add new contacts to the system, they'll automatically get added to this birthday list because you've added all contacts and it just knows by default to add everybody to it. Um, and as some of your old contacts get birthday dates added to them, it'll go ahead and just kind of schedule them, schedule them out. And you can see people who have birthdays in here. And when there's so they're scheduled to go out on these certain dates. So there's that Sam Smith that I had his birthday e card did go out on 10 7. Um, and then I had had that notification that said, hey, you need to call this person because it's their birthday. And I just I didn't do it because I was in a training class. All right, let's take let's take a look at the inside dashboard again. Go ahead. Um, someone asked, does unsub unsubscribe only to that email can campaign or to all emails? So they have an option in here, much like they do in marketing resource, that they can unsubscribe from the campaign, from the person, or from our whole system. Okay, and another question. If we did not have clients connected to newsletter example October, can we activate and then still receive it? So in that case, that's a good question. What you would do is you would go and send a one-off email, like how I was looking at the Halloween one. All of our newsletters are also available as kind of as one offs. You don't have to send them in um, in the actual newsletter to do. So if you added everybody today, they wouldn't get October, but they would get November and you could go directly over to that email. Email marketing and there's a spot over here for our newsletters and you could send them the October newsletter, which is available in our archives. So we have our, doo -doo -doo, let me see, make sure it's been added. It just went out. So September, here's October 23 right here. And our October one was questions to ask when buying new construction. Very relevant topic right now. So you could go ahead and send that as kind of a, just a one-off email to your client database. If you want to go ahead and just kind of catch up. Okay, thank you. And just again, we have that calendar down here at the bottom. If you were in my last class, you know that we are getting ready to do more with these calendars. So just hang in there with me on this calendaring. Right now you can use it internally for your own tasks and events that pertain to your CRM. Uh, you guys will receive um, a training notification when we have some more information on what we're doing with this calendaring. Um, so just keep an eye out for that from training. And when we have that training material and we're ready for that, we will let you know and hopefully you guys will all attend it and learn what more you can do with our CRM.
I did promise you that I would go back and look at listings that were live from another agent. So just give me one second while I stop sharing and switch to another account. And we'll go ahead and take a look at live listings and then we will call it a day for the Insights Dashboard. One second, had to log out as my training account and log back in again. There we go. So here's a good example here. Um, there's that new listing notification up at the top. Notice that it says that we needed to create a virtual tour for this particular property. It doesn't mean we have to, it just means to, it just letting us know that it didn't have a virtual tour um, assigned to it. Maybe this agent didn't do one, it's not gonna do one, it's okay. I did want to bring this to your attention, though, that you can snooze these suggestions. So in this case, maybe we know that we're not going to do a virtual tour on this property. Um, we can just go ahead and snooze it. If we don't want, uh, if we know we're not going to do one, we can certainly dismiss it. Or maybe we know that the virtual tour is coming in from the photographer. I'm going to just snooze it for three days just to remind myself to make sure I send it to my admin to get it in the MLS. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss it. And next time we log in, that will go away. I want to scroll down here to that listing section and this is going to start to give us some more insights about our listings and things that we can do and again remember i said that this insights dashboard is great because it takes you off into the other sections of rwt connect as you need them if i click on the view all listings it is actually going to open up my listing manager and it will take me over to the listing manager so i can manage it that way if that's how i'm, I'm used to working with it otherwise we can work with our listings right here so it's giving us some information that's going on. This is just a snapshot again. This is a to do. So here we have um, this is uh, two acres on York Lane in Virginia Beach and notice it's yellow. It's consider adding some more information. So it's letting us know that hmm, there's there might be something missing, maybe not, um, but it has some suggestions on how we can improve this listing. And the rest of these are all green, ready to go. Um, everything's filled out. There's nothing more that we can add. So we can do a couple of things from this listing dashboard right here. Um, it's giving us an opportunity to view it. So it's going to take us right over to our website and give us a live look at what's going on with this listing. We can share it. So it's giving us an opportunity. It's just grabbing that link for us and we can go ahead and copy and paste that link wherever we need to. Maybe we want to put it in an e-card. Maybe you want to share it to uh, Facebook, wherever we want to share it. It's giving us that link directly to this property which of course is right on our website and all branded to us notice that if you're on your website it's branded to you or it's giving us an opportunity to edit it and that's going to take us over to the listing manager for this particular property so it's considering adding some more information we may just be missing some information on here um, my guess is it's only it only has one photo because it's a um, land listing so it's probably asking us to put in um, some more so in this case, we could expand out this listing description if we want to. Don't forget that the listing description that is in your listing manager can also be seen by the corporate website and any other agents who have uh, site builder websites. So if you want to um, take away some of your abbreviations, that's great. But remember, you have to treat this as if they were public remarks. Um, they can't contain any um, uh, contact information or things like that because it is going to, um, to other websites. But you can do things like adding listing banners here. Um, so this is uh, maybe this is a waterfront property and we want to go ahead and put a listing banner on that main photo that says waterfront. We can certainly do something like that. We do have the ability to create custom banners in here as well. I love the little banner option. Again, remember, you have to treat these as public remarks, um, but the custom banner, if you need it, um, can say whatever you need to say. And then in the search results, when somebody is on one of our site builder websites or on our corporate website, we get that little banner across the top that says something like waterfront or new roof or recently painted or whatever it happens to be. So you can do some custom banners on there. And again, um, the system will warn you when you go to save that it needs to follow public remarks. So you can't put your phone number on it or email address on a listing banner. 
Um, we do pull open houses and things like that directly from the MLS. Uh, we want to make sure that we schedule them out of the MLS to make sure that they get syndicated correctly. Um, so we don't normally add them in here. Uh, but you do have some other options of if you have a co-listing agent, um, you can add that person in the system so that they can also have that display on their website as well. And of course, you have some other options in here as well for setting up those seller insights. We just had that class today, adding any additional tasks to those seller reports, um, you know, fixing a location. Uh, this might be a good one to do that with because this particular property doesn't have a, a real address. Um, we may have to put a new pin on that just to make sure that it shows up correctly, or we can even go ahead and create a flyer out of here. So it's just giving us options that we can do with all of our listings. But one of the things I do love is just kind of a daily to do. Is making sure that we have all the information available. This listing, uh, we could certainly add a couple of things to it if we wanted to. Um, but I do love that it's giving us our reviews, our, our views, our results. How many times it's been saved as a favorite and how many times it's gone out um, with some kind of listing alert. So this is the number of emails that it has um, has been sent on it. So that's our insights dashboard. I love this edition. Um, I think as we kind of continue down the road of using RWT Connect as kind of our central database and um, as our CRM, that this certainly becomes more and more useful, especially for day-to-day -day, uh, management of our clients and contacts and listings, and just making sure that we're staying in touch with as many people and having as much as many touch points as possible with our database. Um, so if you have any questions on Insights Dashboard, I'm happy to answer them or Again, we're always available at web support at rwtown.com to kind of give you a walkthrough or answer any questions that you have. I don't see any questions, Kristen. Well, I thank you very much for spending your Friday with me. I hope you have found this information very useful and I will see you again in November. Thanks, Kristen.